What are you thinking right now in terms of a timeline for the Oilers to make some kind of a decision one way or the other with Peter Shirelli? You know, it's almost a minute-by-minute minute watch, and I don't say that in a flip fashion. I mean, that's the reality of the situation. And I, I'll take it to puck drop tonight, Detroit against the Edmonton Oilers. And if you do an audit of how the Oilers played, you can usually measure, measure that in the first two minutes of how they start that hockey game. And often, it's the first shift or two of Connor McDavid because the rest of the team is relying on Connor McDavid to carry the load. So then by extension, yes, as Ryan and... and uh, and Ray right. just identified, I mean, there is a high level of frustration and intensity in that market, and Peter Shirelli is feeling the brunt of it. I get the sense that there needs to be a bit of a pause to go through the calm of what is the all-star break, and I believe that there are going to be some very heavy, if not difficult, senior management ownership conversations that are going to take place in the days ahead. With all of this then going on outside of the room, in upper management and then in the media as well, in the public eye, how is this affecting the guys inside the room right now? You know, Gino, you control what you can control. I mean, that's what you do as a player. You can't control a lot of things. But for many people in that room, this is a built-in excuse. Because all the talk, all the swirl about how it's not the right group of guys in the room, well, you know what? They've got to make a change in that room. And it's up to them. And there's a top end of the room, which is wearing number 97. And there's somewhere, there's a bottom end of the room. But there's 12 to 14 guys in the middle that can sway the actions of that hockey team. And I'll look at the Montreal Canadiens, who had a drastic cultural change. Well, they really only changed a couple of players. And everybody else in that room saw it as a clean slate to change what they were doing as individuals. And it's been a highly successful change in culture. It wasn't because you changed one or two players. It was because everyone in the room saw that as an opportunity to make a change in the way they were doing things. But it's a built-in excuse for a large number of guys in that locker room, and it can't be.